Hello everyone. For this week, we're going to discuss about Pigafetta's account. No, uh, this was actually uh, by Antonio Pigafetta, who wrote the journey or the voyage of Magellan. So, uh, the document of Pigafetta as becoming the basis in understanding the early Filipino culture. Meron siyang libro actually. Ito yung libro, the first voyage round world by Magellan. So it it's, it really informs us of the characteristics of the natives and and the way of living before. So through this book, nasulat niya ano yung mga early ancestors natin, paano sila, yung culture nila, yung mga traditions nila and all. So Antonio Pigafetta's account of the first voyage around the world is of manifold significance, no? It is an elusive compendium of the cartographic, historical, political, religious and economic components of the certain country na mga nag-visit ni Magellan, which includes the Philippines. So makikita dito ano ba yung mga tao, paan, paano sila gumalaw, yung kultura nila, yung mga kanilang mga religion, yung kanilang pananamit, no? yung mga economic components nila, how are they no? culturally as well. So Pigafetta's work is important not only as a source of information about the voyage itself, but also includes an early Western description of the people of the people and language of the Philippines. Okay, so uh, the work also of Antonio Pigafetta is important not just as a source of information about the voyage, but also as an early Western description of the people and languages of the Philippines. So, makikita din dito ano yung mga languages natin before, no? Be, be, uh, before, before pa tayo na-discover ni Magellan. So, maganda din siyang basahin, okay? Uh, he wanted to keep a record of his trip across the world. Gusto niyang malaman kung ano yung gusto niyang i-take note, no? Lahat ng mga na-observe niya, no? All over the world, not only in Asia but also to western countries, no? He wanted to go through everything that had happened and everything that he had gone through. So yun, so talagang para siyang secretary ni Magellan before. On the other side, however, we should always understand the culture is relative and the culture of the natives at that time was already formed a civilization. So, kahit na na-colonize tayo ng Spain, pero meron pa rin talagang original culture yung Philippines. No, Meron talaga tayong kultura talaga na unique sa atin. Okay, na talagang, it, ito talaga tayo originally. Yung mga inhabitants ni Magellan, ito talaga tayo. Hence, it is wrong to say that the early Filipinos were barbaric or savages. Kasi meron talaga tayong mga practices na before, even, you know. It is just their civilization that was not the same with the Spaniards now, with our standards of civilization. Thus, culture became relative. So, ito talaga, I would always want to reiterate this. Culture is relative. Some people might see us as barbaric, pero yun yung normal way of living natin. Yun yung paano tayo gumgumalaw. No? Also, we can say that 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 Ferdinand, that Ferdinand Magellan did not come to the Philippines no? to colonize. However, because of his findings and his death, it led to the series of exploration that resulted in the colonization during the arrival of Miguel Lopez de Legazpi, no? Hence, it can be noted that if without him, the Philippines would not be known by the Spaniards. So, take note of that one, the importance of Miguel Lopez de Legazpi on the discovery of the Philippines. Okay, now let's discuss the Cartilla ng Katipunan. So, dadako tayo ngayon sa mga Katipuneros. Ito yung original document ng Cartilla ng Katipunan. So, it is written by Emilio Jacinto, who is the brain of the Katipunan. It consists of the 12 guiding principles and 14 teachings of the kataas-taasang, kagalang-galangang katipunan ng mga anak ng bayan. With the Cartilla, you will be informed of the ethical values that should be upheld by all members of the Katipunan, such as good morals and character, equality, no, amidst of race and descent, and the respect for women and the defense of the oppressed. So dito, nakasaad dito no, yung mga practices at yung mga pinaniniwala ang prinsipyo ng mga katipuneros. Okay, it was Andres Bonifacio who later wrote the revised Decalogue that was never published because because Bonifacio believed that Asinto's Cartilla was superior to what he had made. Okay, so ayun, no? So take note of this uh, information. 
Now let's proceed now to the Act of Declaration of Philippine Independence and the Treaty of Paris. So, it was declared that June 12, 1898 was the independence of our country in Kawit Cavite. So it is uh, the date that we followed, no? even up until this time. So, yun yung date kasi nagkaroon siya ng significant um, event no? or symbolic, naging sim symbolic yun. No kasi doon talaga nangyari no na talagang mga yung mga Filipinos talagang they wanted their independence no they they are like shouting for it nagkaroon talaga ng formal event okay but our true independence was only given to us on July 14 1946 by the Americans so this is actually the true independence that we really uh, are independent na no from Spain, I mean from Americans. No? So yun talaga yung ating uh, independence originally or technically. Okay? But we are following the June 12, 1898 kasi doon talaga sumigaw talaga. No? Yun talaga yung nag-uprise yung mga KKK. No? Yung mga, yung mga katipuneros. Okay, how do we gain our complete independence through the Tidings McDuffie Act, which is also called as the Philippine Commonwealth and Independence Act of 1934? So the U.S. statute that provided for Philippine independence to take effect on July 4, 1946 after a 10-year transitional period during the Commonwealth government. So through this, no, uh, Tidings McDuffie, McDuffie Act that the US provided us our independence no which happened on July 4 1946 so 10 year din yung naging transitional period no to commonwealth government or philippine government okay so just a few information about the treaty of paris emilio aguinaldo thought that the americans came in the philippines to help the filipinos gain its independence but without the knowledge the american government and crown spain had an had this agreement already to transfer the philippines to america so parang may a little bit of panloloko so akala natin na magkakaroon na tayo ng independence pero pinagbili pala tayo no sa Americans. So, ang plano nun is magiging annex tayo. No? So, America and the plenty potentiary of the, of the Republic of France on behalf of the Spanish government agreed to convene in Paris to negotiate a treaty that would officially end the hostilities of the Spanish-American War and sign the Protocol of Peace. Okay, so on the following day, the Americans and Spaniards in the Philippines staged a battle for the official surrender of the Spaniards. It was done not to create an issue that the crown of Spain easily gives up its colony. So, yun yung nangyari, no? That this treaty, you know, had become the agreement between the Spaniards and the Americans. Okay, may mga debates then that happened in the Senate of America for the ratification or making it valid of this treaty no, as it became an issue to American becoming an imperial power. So, merong may mga doubtful no, sa decision na kailangan mangyari ito. Okay, merong incident sa San Juan Bridge where a Filipino was shot that ignited the Philippine-American conflict which triggered the Senate to ratify the treaty. So, It was on February 6, 1899 that the Senate ratified the Treaty of Paris and that the Philippines was officially under the American government already. So take note of that one. So again, it was on February 6, 1899, which ratified this treaty, no? wherein the Philippines was officially and validly already under American government already. So, yun yung time talaga na nalipat na tayo sa Americans. Okay. I hope you've learned something from this. I could recommend you to read the different information found in this PowerPoint presentation. Thank you so much for listening and goodbye.